Hi everyone, for today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Chikohodo FO series brushes. Look at that, don't they look so pretty? I was so excited when I finally was able to complete the set uh, because um, I didn't actually buy all of this in one go. I think I placed um, three or four orders um, just to complete this because um, it's quite a bit pricey especially if you buy them in one go so yeah and I also bought this from two different um, brush retailers uh, from Japan so um, I'm also gonna talk about that um, a little bit later in the video so what I'm gonna do today is that I'm gonna just give you my observations and the things that I like and I don't like about the Chikohodo FO series and I'm also gonna show you a guys a demo um, just to show you guys how I use it um, in with my makeup sentimentalities the Chikohodo FO series is a set of eight makeup brushes, all very pretty, very beautiful, and it comes with a full head of Silver Fox hair. So this is an all-natural hairbrush. Now all of the brushes have a certain weight to them. It all depends on like you know how big the brush head is, and um, I do like that they actually feel very light on the hand which is actually quite surprising because I really thought initially that the brushes are going to be a little bit heavy but they're not they're quite lightweight so we just have to be very careful when we are holding them because um well with me anyway i have a tendency of always like you know letting go of my brushes because i'm very um light-handed with them so i just have to make sure that i actually hold them pretty well on my hands now all of the brushes come in a handle design like this we have this very nice olive green kind of a ferrule and I can see that it has some golden glitters on them very nice and very pretty and we still have the Chikohodo label here and also the label that says um, this is by Teshu Takemori and if we see the handle here this is actually made of light maple very nice and very smooth and there's like a little dip here at the waist which is also quite evident in all of the brushes this is even like um seen in the f08 brush the smallest brush in the series now all of the brushes on the series is actually quite dense and they're also quite soft but it's actually these three brushes the f01 the f03 and the f04 which is very airy and very bushy and it was actually these three brushes and the F05 that attracted me to the series. And as I've said earlier, all of the brush heads on this brush series is made of silver fox hair. And they are actually very, very soft. I am actually quite surprised on how soft they are. Even on the much more denser uh, makeup brushes, they still feel very soft to the touch. And I was so intrigued by um, Silver Foxes that I just, you know, did a little bit of research and tried to see what made them so special. And um, I just found out that Silver Foxes and Red Foxes are the same. The only difference is that um, Silver Foxes has a slight variation or mutation in their genome that um, makes their fur turn black and gray instead of red. Okay, so let's talk about these brushes one by one and I'm going to start by talking about the F01. So the F01 brush, as you see here, is the biggest brush in terms of brush head size on the series. And I do have to say that um, the, pa the design of the brush head is like a paddle head type of a design. But I'm just surprised on how fluffy and airy the brush head is. And if we just tilt the brush over, we can see that the brush head has like an oval kind of design it's like in between like a circle it's like an ovoid kind of a design so that's a much more perfect description of the brush head design and the crimp here on the ferrule is very different because it just it's more although it looks like a paddle head brush but it looks like it fans out more so it's almost like a fan brush but it's just like you know denser together much more closer now um, I do not have any other similar brush head design um, on my collection but I'm just going to um, put this side by side in the other um, brushes that I use for powder products um, that I have in my kit and if we compare how the B206 brush blooms against the Chikohodo F01 
uh, it looks very different where in the Chikahodo F01 brush is actually much more airier and fluffier. Now in comparison to the MK02 brush, um, they almost have the same brush head design but then again the um, F01 is still fluffier and it blooms in a much more bigger sense. All right, and the next brush that we have here is the F02 brush, and this is the foundation brush. And if you guys can see here, this is actually a flat top brush. Very nice, very compact, and very dense. And I like that it has like a nice circular shape of the brush head. And I also like that it has like a, it tapers to a dome at the very top of the bristle and I really like that because again it's like the pads of our fingers you know so it fits perfectly into like the deeper surfaces of the face and this is actually the first brush that I took out from its packaging and as I started to rub the brush on the palm of my hands I was so surprised on how soft it was especially like you know because it's quite dense but it's very soft so I was so amazed by this now, I actually don't use a lot of flat top kabuki type of um, foundation brushes when I apply foundation. But um, just for the sake of comparison, um, I do like the size of the F02. And if we compare it to like the base one brush from Sonia G, because that's also one of the brushes that I use for um, foundation application, they're almost the same in terms of size. And they're almost the same in terms of the size of the brush head, especially when it blooms. So I really like that. And I also want to compare the F02 through the most recent um, release of Sonia G, which is her classic base from her Fusion series. And um, I mean, the brush head designs are quite different. But because I plan to use them for foundation application, I might just as well compare them and put them side by side. And if we just run the fingers through the classic base from the Fusion series and in comparison to the F02, uh, we can actually see that the classic base loses its shape while the F02 retains its shape. So um, I guess these two will have different um, personalities when you're applying foundation and when you're blending them out but it's nice to have as well now um yes i'm planning to use the f02 brush for foundation application may it be for powder cream or liquid and i'm not too sure i'm gonna use this for cream blush or gel blush application because um it's just too flat but just for the sake of a comparison i'm gonna put the smooth buffer right beside the fo2 brush just so that we can see um the difference in the length of the bristles and you know how differently they bloom and now that we put them side by side it's quite easy to tell which brush will actually diffuse more color especially with powder products on the face and which brush will apply a much more opaque and full coverage application of powder on the face <laughs> all right and the next brush that they have here is the f03 brush and this is actually the brush that is you know you can use for blush application and if we compare this to the f01 brush we guys can see that the f03 is actually like the little sister of the f01 but we can actually see like their brush head design is actually quite similar to each other wherein they would they, they fan out a little bit more they're not paddle like in design and um one thing also that i do have to say is that the f03 still has a very compact and fluffy brush head very soft to the touch and it still has that ovoid brush head design, which is quite nice as well. And again, it also tapers into a dome-like um, design at the very tips of the bristles. Now, for the sake of comparison, I'm going to put the F03 beside the MKKO brush from Chikohodo. Now, if we just tilt them up together, now we can actually see that the F03 brush is actually much more fluffier and it blooms much more wider in comparison to the MKKO brush. Because again, the F03 brush has a much more ovoid type of brush head design, while the MKKO brush is a much more rounder brush head design. And after putting those two brushes side by side, I have just realized right now, like the F03 brush reminds me of how like a Yachio brush actually um, like, you know, stands and blooms, but their brush head designs are also very different. 
still have this oval design and the Achiro brush is actually much more rounder. So next what they have here is the F04 brush and this is their angled brush and if we just flip it over here to look at the brush head it's still very soft by the way and it, we still have that oval design but it just tapers into a much more like angled edge here um, at the very side and I have been very intrigued by this brush because again I do not have a lot of these types of brushes in my collection and the main reason why I decided to get this is because I wanted to compare it to my other angled brush that I have here in my kit and this is also from Chikohodo and this came from their soiree series and if we just put them side by side we can actually see that the Chikohodo F04 brush has shorter bristles than that of the angled brush from the soiree series we still have that same ovoid design and both brush heads are quite soft to the touch. I'm quite surprised by it. They're quite similar. And of course, the F04 is actually much more softer to the touch in comparison to this brush from Chikohodo because after all, this is made of Saikoho hair. All right, and the next brush that I have here is the F05 brush. And this is an eyeshadow brush, which has a much more paddle-like design for the brush head and it's still quite dense at the belly by the way and it tapers into a nice dome shape here at the very top of the bristles again very resilient and it has a very nice um, bounce to it it goes back into its shape um, extremely fast after you have like you know run your fingers through it now um, I was very intrigued by this brush that when I first saw it on photos I really wanted to get this because it actually reminded me of my very old Laura Mercier brush. Um, this is the brush that I used to set in the under eye area. And if we just compare them together and put them side by side, the length of both brush heads are almost the same. And if we just put them on the side, we can see the difference between how full the belly is of the F05 in comparison to the Laura Mercier. So which means that the F05 brush will enable us to pick up much more um, creamier types of powders or like you know those baked powders that we can use in the under eye area you know if we just want to have a much more fuller coverage in the under eye area I think the F05 is a great brush to use okay next I have the three other eyeshadow brushes from the F05 series from Chikohodo and I'm just gonna zoom through them and I'm just going to show you guys like you know how they look like and truthfully I didn't actually plan to buy them um, because you know I don't think uh, I would be using them because the brush designs here well except for this maybe um, is not the type of brushes that I use for eyeshadow application but you know they were just an accessory to the purchase um, primarily because um, the first few times that I ordered them I ordered them from CD Japan and you know with CD Japan you have to have like at least 10,000 yen worth of products bought to be able to um, partake with their free delivery service so um, so I thought to myself like uh, maybe I just have to buy a brush so that um, I get to the 10,000 yen minimum purchase to avail of the delivery so um, but truthfully, um, I wish I just didn't have to do that because now I have brushes with me that I don't have plans of using. But anyway, um, who knows, as the months or the years progress, I might decide to play with them. But I'm still going to show you guys um, what I would use this for. So anyway, the first brush that I have here is the F06 brush. This is a small eyeshadow brush. It's still quite dense here at the brush head. It has quite a full belly and it just like appears to be the baby sister of the F05 brush. Okay, the next brush that I have here is the F07 brush and this brush is has like a candle-like type of brush head design. Again, very soft but very dense and it tapers into a much more finer point at the very tip. And the next brush that I have here is the F08 brush, the much more newer addition to the F0 series. And this brush looks like it could be a smudger brush. It's quite full at the belly as well, and it tapers into a much more rounder dome type point again that we can use in the under eye area or on the like, you know, lash line and we can use this to smudge things and again this is a very soft brush although it feels very dense so you still have to be very light-handed 
so that you don't feel any prickling sensation. Whoa, there's a bee <laughs> on your lash line. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo and I'm gonna start by using the FO2 brush. Now the FO2 brush is the one that has a flat top um, kind of a design. And this is actually like, you know, when you see it at the description box, like they say that you can actually use this for like, you know, powder application or uh, like, you know, mineral foundation products. And that's actually great. But this is just like, you know, some loose powder and you can, and you've just seen on how much fluff came out of the brush head when I started to apply this like translucent powder on my skin so that's how dense this brush head is and that's how much powder this brush head can actually pick up and I do have to say that it actually feels very smooth on the face and it actually just helps in creating this very nice like you know matte finish on the skin I have no intention of actually using the FO2 brush for powder application because I have actually been using the FO2 brush for liquid and cream foundation application. All right, so I have an even application of just like, you know, translucent powder on this side of my face and it does the job quite well. So I'm just removing some of the powder products from the brush head and I'm going to apply like a nice thin liquid foundation on this side of my face using the FO2 brush. And as you guys can see here, it's been loaded at the very top of the brush head. And you guys can see that upon um, contact with the liquid foundation, the brush head have started to crumple. And it is because of this, like when you start to like, you know, spread the foundation, you can actually see some streaking going on. I don't think you can actually see it. Um, on camera but um, anyway if you just like you know use this in a much more buffing type of a motion it is actually able to spread out the foundation on the skin and I'm actually trying a new foundation today so this is the Dior face and body in um, 2N and I think this is just too light for my skin t um, color but anyway let's just try it so i think i would have to go and get myself a much more deeper tone although it kind of matches my neck but i just find it a little bit too light so again if you see any streaking when you apply foundation using the fo2 brush just buff it out oh my god this foundation is highly fragrant i can smell it and it's not dissipating so as you guys can see, the FO2 brush actually does a very good job of blending away liquid foundation well into the skin. This also works well with cream foundation, by the way. Um, just make sure that you don't load like or like supercharge the brush head with product. Always use this with thin layers because supercharging the bristle can actually like you know clump up the bristles to so actually create a lot of texture and streaking on the skin, and it will um, make you double the time of actually trying to blend out and to buff out the product on the skin. And as you guys can see here in the brush head, you don't have a lot of like, you know, leftover foundation products. So that's actually great. And also one other thing, I don't feel it like, you know, dragging on my skin. Like the, again, the way an artist brush, like, you know, when you land the artist brush on the face, you can feel it like, you know, tugging and putting on pressure on the skin. But with this brush, even if it's quite dense, as you guys can see, when you land it on your face and you just start pressing it, you don't feel any uncomfortable sensation at all. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set this part of my face with loose powders. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer a little bit of the loose powder here on the cap and I'm just spreading it. And I'm going to be using the F01 brush, the biggest brush in the collection. And I'm gonna tap off the excess. And I'm just going to lightly, like you know, buff it in circular motions into my skin. Again, I'm tapping the excess. And I'm just using this in very nice, gentle, circular motions. Okay, one other thing also is that when you would use the F01 brush, to actually set powder into the skin. Just make sure that you don't load the brush head straight onto the powder here because it actually picks up a ton of product. And what happens is, 
I don't want to do it actually because um, I'm gonna have too much powder product on my face. So this will actually create a very, very cakey kind of powder application on the skin. So just make sure that, you know, it's, it's either you, well, I don't suggest that you tap the brush because you will actually like ruin the ferrule, but I just tapped it so that you guys can see how much product the brush head actually picks up but you know just tap off the excess at the back of the hand or if you have a microfiber towel just tap it there before you actually um, apply the powder with the brush on the face and the main reason why I'm saying that is because the brush head is very very soft although it's very resilient but it's not as resilient as a true um, goat haired brush wherein if you use a brush like that you are actually able to blend and buff out the powder but with this brush because it's too soft you will actually have trouble blending out powders if you apply a very thick layer of it on your skin because as you guys can see when you press it onto the face it just it, you know fluffs out and that will not actually give you the ability to blend out powders um, extremely well the way a goat hair bristle brush will actually do so again with this brush work in very thin layers and the other thing that I like with the F01 brush is that um, it has the capability of actually picking up like you know those hard pressed powders so this is like a bronzer so I'm gonna like bronze tour a bit and because of the airy nature of this brush it's actually able to deliver a very nice like you know diffused color into the skin and i really like it when a brush does this because i actually prefer to use very thin layers of bronzer on my skin with this i don't really have to worry about like you know excessive bronzer application because it actually like you know picks up quite the correct amount a product from a pan especially if it's in a hard pressed formulas All right so I'm just going to blend out the colors more and I'm just going to warm up my skin so if you're in a market for a brush that actually helps you to create a very nice you know soft bronze toward look the F01 can do that for you okay next is the F03 brush now the F03 brush is actually much more appealing to me because this is the brush that I actually prefer to use if I want to set powder on the face because um, it's just smaller so it's much more denser than the F01 brush so the F03 brush will actually enable me to actually like buff out powders to a certain degree again on the face because again it's still very very soft but um, for this video, I actually want to apply um, like a nice topper, like a blush topper for this. And I'm going to be using my very well-loved Orgasm Blush from NARS. And the reason why I'm using this brush is because of the resiliency of this brush and its ability to actually pick up um, you know, hard-pressed powders. And those powders with creamier formulas, like those big gelée formulas. And I also like that um, this will actually deliver a very diffused color on the face. Now the other thing also with the F03 brush is I actually have to be very careful when I am using this with like you know um, these talc based powders because I, see, I don't know if you guys can see it I think I'm gonna put an insert here but if you just you know run the brush on the pan you can actually see it start to like you know disturb the powder a bit and it starts to like you know create a lot of product disturbance and you just have to be very careful when that happens because you will be picking up a ton of pigment from the pan of your blush so again i'm just using very light layers here and i'm just blending it using very light strokes just so that we create a very nice intensity on the skin As you guys can see, it's imparting a very nice, well diffused look. But again, I'm using this in very light strokes and I am actually applying very thin layers of color into my face just so that we don't have like one like full impact of color. All right, and this is a matte cheek color by the way. So it actually does a very good job of just like, you know, blending the product and the color well into the skin. 
All right, the next brush that I have here is the F04 brush, and this is the angled brush. And we all know that we would use this type of a brush for contouring application. Um, again, you have to be very careful, especially if you're using like you know contouring products that are talc based, because this brush will pick up a ton of powder from the pan. So I'm just gonna remove some of the excess here. Just make sure that you actually like use very thin layers and very light strokes just so that you have this very nice well diffused and well blended color on the cheeks so that's the initial color done and i'm going to pick up this much more deeper shade and i'm just going to remove some of that here so as you guys can see i don't know if you can but there was like a lot of like fluff that came out from the brush head and i'm just going to apply that here on my cheek just so that we have a teeny tiny bit of contouring going on so as you guys can see i'm just applying the contouring color in one direction i am not like buffing it like creating like circular motions or like oval motions nope you actually want to start by applying the deeper shade here at the very back of your cheekbone near your ear and just blend it from there because what this does is that it just creates a much more diffused look as the contouring product nears the very end of your cheekbone okay so it's popping out perfect again i'm going to repeat that process here on the other side and the other thing that I have noticed with the F04 brush, if you are someone who actually wants to have a much more precise contouring application on your face, this brush will not do that for you because again, the brush head is quite fluffy and it blooms extremely well. So this will actually like, you know, apply a much more diffused amount of color on the face. So if you want a much more precise contouring application, you have to have a much more smaller and a denser brush, like maybe the Sculpt 4 brush from Sonia G. Okay, I'm gonna add some highlight now and I'm gonna go back and using the F03 brush and I'm gonna pick up some of this Albatross here. And I'm just gonna use this to apply some of that color here at the very highest point of my cheekbones. And also here. Okay, not too much because we do, I don't like to have a ton of glow today. All right, so this is how the F01, 2, 3, and 4 brush applies product well on the face. All right, so next, what I'm going to talk about is the F05 brush. And I really love this brush. I was very intrigued when I first saw this brush because this is the brush that I would definitely use when I would like to set the under eye area with powder and I really like how well this brush actually picks up a nice amount of product and how well it actually blends and delivers the product in the under eye area or you can also use this you know here at the bridge of the nose just to set it and to remove any excess oil and shine and again it actually is very very soft I don't feel any prickling sensation because you know that's a problem sometimes if we use like um, synthetic type of brush heads when you apply product in the under eye area you can really feel some like you know prickling sensation but not with this one very nice and very soft and very gentle although this is a eyeshadow brush and you can actually use this like you know because it fits fairly well into the eyelid but I just find that the brush head is just too big for me not unless if you want to use this for like a one and done eyeshadow you can actually use this because it can actually pick up a good amount of um, color and pigment from the pan okay next let's try the F06 7 and 8 the accessories to my purchase and um, the F06 is a very small brush so it's actually like the younger sister of the f05 brush and it can actually give you a lot of like you know if you want to have a much more detailed eyeshadow application on the eyes this is actually great to use now the brush head is actually very dense and it can actually pick up a ton of products from your pan so let's just try that so i just so i'm going to go back to the f05 brush and i'm just going to tap the excess here see it picks up a ton of 
product and this is a NARS eyeshadow by the way um, this is this is from the Cordura pan I'm not too sure but anyway so um, let's just apply some of this color on the eyelid okay, I'm changing the position so that I have a ton of the color here in the middle okay, I'm just gonna remove some of that in the back of my hand and I'm just gonna apply whatever is left and blend it well into my crease and into my socket line so again because the brush head of the F05 is too big um, we can't be very precise with our eyeshadow application okay so let's just blend that out okay perfect right so the F06 so the F06 I'm gonna go back to the same eyeshadow color that I used all over my eyelid I'm going to remove some of the excess here because again it picked up a ton of product from the pan and I'm just going to use this to apply color into my lower lash line here so as you guys can see it really does like you know apply a good amount of color and pigment into the eye area okay, I'm just going to create a lift there just so that you know it makes my <laughs> I do apologize for that. I didn't realize I was a little bit clumsy and because I was concentrating on actually applying um, eyeshadows that I actually kicked on the base of the um, stand of my camera. But anyway, so back to the eyeshadow application. So what I'm doing now is I'm just applying the eyeshadow color into my socket line. And the F06 brush is actually helping me in creating the shape that I need for my eyes. Because again, my eyes are a little bit droopy and sleepy. So we just have to create a very nice lift. Now, um, even though if I didn't really plan to purchase the other eyeshadow brushes from the FO series, I'm actually quite surprised on how well they blend out products. And I'm also quite surprised on how easy it is to actually use them and to adapt them into my um, makeup routine. And also, I'm very surprised on how well it actually picks up, like, you know, those cream to powder type of formulas or those baked gelée formulas. They're quite resilient, they're quite strong. And that's one thing that I appreciate about the FO brush series from Chico Hodo. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the FO7 brush and I'm gonna pick up a matte color. And as you guys can see again, it picks up a ton of color, which is quite surprising for me because I really wasn't expecting that. But then again, the bristles of the FO7 is quite dense. So we have to be very careful in picking up the color like you know in just pressing the brush into the pan because you will pick up a ton of color and pigment okay so what I'm doing now is I'm just like you know running the brush through my socket line and this will just like you know intensify that and um, one other thing that I have noticed with the F07 brush is that I feel a little bit of some prickling sensation. Maybe because um, of how the brush head is designed, but it's actually not uncomfortable. But if you are someone who has like excessively sen sensitive eyes, this might be an issue for you. Right, so I'm quite happy with that and now I'm gonna go back to the F08 brush and this is the newest brush that was added into the F0 series and I'm going to be using the same matte brown color that I use to intensify my socket line and I'm gonna use this again to intensify my lash line and I'm just, again just removing the excess can you see how much color this brush had picked up okay, and I'm gonna apply that just on my lash line okay now one other thing I have to say is that the brush head of the F08 is actually bigger than I am used to because if you looked at my Sonia G video wherein I actually reviewed her smudger brushes I said there that my favorite smudger brushes are the older brushes from Laura Mercier and um, the size of the brush head of the Laura Mercier is I think even half of this brush and I am still looking for a brush head like that that I would use for a smudger brush 
because I just feel that it would give me more precision because sometimes if our brush head is actually quite big it tends to give us fallout but I'm happy to say that um, this brush is not actually giving me fallout at the moment being that this is a matte product but again I'm just being very careful and I'm using very light layers I'm just picking up some of the excess product here at the back of my hand and I'm just blending it but I do have to say though that the F08 brush is very gentle on the eyes it doesn't hurt and it doesn't add pressure okay so I'm just gonna add a little bit of a flick here on the outer corners just so it enhances the lift of my eye okay and um, I'm just going to use whatever is left on the brush if I want to enhance my socket line this is also a great brush to use for that okay I'm just enhancing my lower lash line adding a little bit of like that matte brown color concentrating some of the color here in the outer corner and just like you know helping in creating that lift and also one other thing I really love the size of the F08 like if you just want to apply like a very nice diffuse amount of color into your eyebrows if you just want to fill in the gaps with this you can also use this again I really like brushes that are multi-use all right so I think this is it so this is my thoughts on the F O series brushes from Chico Hodo now I do have plans of using some other brushes in different ways like for example the F O 3 brush I have yet to try this for cream blush products because again I'm interested to see if this will work because again if you market a brush and you say that it's actually like you know as resilient as goat hair but as soft as squirrel hair then this brush has a lot of things to live up to so I might as well try that but um, I'm, I'm not gonna do that today because um, I think this video is gonna be way too long if I use this with a ton of products but, and uh, one other thing also I forgot to do this earlier is that I actually want to try the F03 brush with my Guerlain Meteorite so this is in golden and let's try to see if this will pick up product straight from the tin and it actually does so let's just try to see if it adds a good amount of color into the face and I think it does it does very well not bad and I have to say it fits fairly well into the tin I love the size of this oh Oh, and by the way, in terms of cleaning the brush heads from the FO series, I just do it the regular way that I do it. I actually have a brush care video that I did like maybe a year ago. So I'm going to put a link down in the description box for that so that you can go and check it out for yourself. All right, so that's it from me today. So if you guys have any more questions about the products that I use today, especially with the FO series brushes, please leave them down in the comments box below and let's have a conversation about it. And if you have any of these brushes with you, please let me know what they are and what you use them for so that you know we can get to know them together and maybe I could pick up some tips from you guys as well. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I do hope that you are having a good day wherever you are. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh my god my camera almost fell anyway